What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Friday 13th lawsuit update. Again, joined by the one and only Larry Zerner. But before we dive in here and kind of break down the recent oral arguments, I figured it'd be best to give you a heads up. This lawsuit is a pretty complicated one. One that has taken, taken many, many videos to break down and keep up with. So if you haven't already, go check out our previous interviews with Larry where he breaks down pretty much this whole thing. And rather than making him repeat himself here, Go check out those videos, all the links you need in the description. And of course, make sure you go follow Larry on Twitter. That's the least we can do to support the guy for doing all of this to help us understand the lawsuit. Okay? So, go follow him either at Larry Zerner or at Zerner Law. Follow both of them. Just do it. It's good for all of us. It's good for me. It's good for him. It's good for you. Alright, that out of the way. Here we go. Let's break down the oral arguments. What's next for the lawsuit? Let's dive right in. Well, hey, everyone, if you haven't seen any of the other videos that I've done with Slash and Cast, first of all, you should go watch those because that'll really put you up to date on the case. Uh, I'm uh, Larry Zerner. I was Shelly in Friday the 13th Part 3, the kid who gave Jason his hockey mask. And then I left acting having peaked because you can't really top a role as good as Shelly. So left acting and became uh, an entertainment lawyer, and I've been an entertainment lawyer now for 29 years, and I specialize in copyright uh, issues. And so I, since this is a case involving Friday the 13th and copyright law, that is my jam all over the place. Yeah, but of course you're not actually working on the case. Some people get confused by that, thinking that you're Victor's lawyer. Right. I'm not Victor's lawyer. I'm not Sean's lawyer. I am just the guy telling the fans what's going on. Yeah, which we all really appreciate you, by the way. I can speak for all fans when we say, like, we've been kind of, we'd be lost without you in this mix. Okay. <laughs> That's why I'm doing it. I, yeah. want to, I want to give a little guidance so you're not as so long. Yeah, but now we're in a situation where we had a lawsuit, we, they, there was a decision, and then Horror Rink appealed, and we're finally in that appellate court situation where there were oral arguments, which just happened the other day. Uh, can you kind of help un make us have an understanding of what happened during those oral arguments and where we might be leading to next? Yeah, so uh, brief, the little brief recap is that so Victor won at the trial court on what's called a summary judgment. There was no trial. The judge just looked at the papers and said, I don't need to, we don't need to have a jury decide this. It is clear that Victor was not an employee. And that is the question here. Was Victor Sean's employee when he wrote the script or was he considered to be an independent contractor? That is the issue that the court is trying to decide. And there is a case called CCNV versus Reed. Uh, it's a Supreme Court case in which the Supreme Court said, these are the factors that you use to determine whether somebody is an employee or an independent contractor for purposes of copyright law. Uh, so the, the court will look at such things as how was the person paid, right? Were they paid a lump sum or they paid a salary? Uh, where did they work? Did they work at their own location or did they work at, at, at an office that the other person supplied? Um, uh, was, were they, was it just one job or is it an ongoing job? And how much control did the quote unquote employer, in this case Sean, have over the person doing the work, in this case Victor? So there, there, there are these factors that are also another factor is how what was the tax treatment, right? If, if right, you get a lump sum and no with, withholding, that's more like an independent contractor. But if they are withholding, that's more like an employee. So there's all these factors in the court. The lower court did this analysis uh, and. and came to the decision that Victor was clearly an independent contractor. Now, uh, Sean appealed that. So both sides prepared briefs, right, legal papers, where they laid out Sean's lawyer said, this is why the judge was wrong. Uh, and, and Victor's lawyer said, no, this is why the judge was right. Um, and then both sides are, were given, they're really just given 12 minutes to basically just summarize what they said in the papers. And uh, and then uh, the judges can ask them questions about their positions. And so Sean's lawyers have taken the position that because Victor was a member of the Writers Guild, the WGA, that that should be a factor in this analysis of whether uh, he was an employee or an independent contractor, because 
really only, well, according to Sean's lawyers, only employees belong to unions. And so since this was a union contract, uh, that should be, that's it, case done. It's a union contract, uh, 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 Sean wins. The judges did not seem to be buying that argument during the oral arguments. Uh, there are no cases that where any court has taken that position. And um, the judges seem to say there's a difference between employee for labor law and employee for copyright law. And we're not we're not willing to uh, say they're, they're both the same thing. Um, and and then uh, Victor's lawyer made the point that it wasn't that the judge at the lower court disregarded that as a factor, he just gave it no weight. He didn't, he considered it. He went, oh, Victor was a member of a union. Okay, eh, that's not that's not making me rule in anyone's favor. I'm not giving it any significance as to whether, because in this situation, especially when you're to be a member of the WGA, it doesn't say whether you are a employee of the person who uh, writing you, because obviously you can write a script on your own, completely on your own, right? And many, I'm sure many people listening to this, have written scripts on their own, and then you can sell it to somebody. And if you're lucky enough, that will be under a union. They can go, this will be under a union deal. And, okay, great, then you do it under a union deal. But you were never their employee. You just, you wrote the whole thing on your own at home. There's so, it shouldn't, it, I agree, it should have no play in the analysis. Um, so, but anyway, both sides, so both sides had about 12 minutes to talk, uh, the, the, the good line was that at the end of uh, Victor's lawyer at the end said, um, I, I said, I, w I only wish that the hearing was on uh, Friday the 13th instead of Thursday the 13th, uh, which did get a laugh, which is hard to do in a, in a, in a court. You don't, it's, it's, you don't always go for the laugh. It's a risky move. He got, he, he, he did it. He made, he got the laugh. Um, uh, and so that was it. So now what happens next? Uh, I know that's what you're what, what you're dying to know. So the judges heard their argument. They read the papers. They will issue a written opinion. Uh, that opinion could come in a few weeks, but most likely it will come in May or June. Basically, judges uh, the, the the courts have a season like baseball and, and basketball, and the season ends in June. And so they're hearing all these arguments, and they sort of get them all out by the end of June, and I think they usually take July off. Um, maybe they take the whole summer off. But so they, they so you, so it'll certainly, there'll be a decision by the end of June. Uh, and the judge can do three things. One, they can uphold the verdict of the lower court and say, um, Victor still wins. He was not an employee. Uh, they can Reverse. They can say, no, we are taking this uh, this factor that uh, he was a WGA member into account and looking at this and we're going to say Sean wins. OK. And third thing they can do is go, you know. There's just these facts here that need to be rooted out, and that's not up to the judge. It's up to a jury and we're going to send it back to the lower court and have and say we want to. That make them do a trial with the jury and have the jury decide. Now, obviously, I know you guys listening going, please, no, <laughs> that's the worst, because then this, this thing goes on, you know, years more if, if there's a trial. So I, I, uh, I, uh, now, so could happen, but those, so those are the three scenarios that, um, that would occur. Um, it's, uh, if uh, if either side loses, um, well, whichever side loses, can they can appeal to then to the Supreme Court and ask the Supreme Court to hear the case. The Supreme Court takes one percent of the cases that people ask them to take. Uh, it is extremely unlikely that they would take uh, this case. It is, it, 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 although I, I say if, if, if they reversed and said Victor loses, I, then there would be a really interesting issue over, do, does, do, do, does this issue of union membership, does that mean that you have to, uh, that they're not employed, that they are automatically employees? The Supreme Court could go, ah, we don't like that, and, and come in to reverse that. That would be an, an important issue. 
if Victor loses, if Victor wins and Sean loses, and Sean goes tries to go Supreme Court, I think there's zero chance that Supreme Court would take it. But all of this, and then all of this is just going. We are if Victor continues to win, and I, I, in my opinion, he will continue to win. He just has the better legal argument. Um, uh, then we're just we're exactly where we were four years ago when this thing started and Victor sent out his notice of termination, which is that um, Sean and Victor still have to make a deal because the way it works, Victor owns the rights to the fir- the script to the first movie in the United States. Sean owns the rights to basically everything else. Um, and people go, well, yeah, but why do we need, we don't, why, we don't need, the rights to part one to make uh, to make a movie with big Jason, adult Jason, but you do because adult Jason is derived from baby Jason, right? The kid Jason, he, that's his story. That's him. Uh, and so you, you do need his rights to do it. And then, so then the big fight over is again, and this is just a, it, there, a, there is no clear answer to this one. Uh, how do you split up the money uh, if you do a movie when you if you did it was like if you did a movie like the 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 remake the reboot 2009 reboot right that was parts of one two three and four right so what would what what do you pay Victor for that now you know I'm sure Sean's people would go well you know ten percent five percent and I'm sure Victor's going I want fifty percent because you can't make it without um, so that's the fight, and that fight is that. That's why they can't make a deal because there is no real answer as to how the money should split, in, when they make additional movies or they make additional games uh, or uh, action figures or merch or anything else. Uh, I do want to just one thing because a lot of people are like, I can't wait. I want this to be done so we can get back to making the game. They are not making any more games. I'm just going to put it out there. The guys at Fear the Gun have stopped. They, they're they not making the game anymore. No more. There's not going to be any more game updates, even when this is resolved. Because unless somebody says, we're, there's just not enough money in it. Nope. There, now, that could be if they make another movie that, something that Warner Brothers would go, okay, now we're going to put money into a new game. And that could easily happen. But... There's not going to be. We're never going to see the Uber Jason in the Friday Thirteenth game. Uh, I just. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. <laughs> not going to happen. So stop asking for it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That was my. Uh, that was my rant. How long do you think that would take? The actual deal part. Probably a long time, right? It's. They. They can't do it. I mean, what do you think? They've. They've been trying <laughs> to do it. It's not like they haven't sat. I. It's just a question of. Maybe. I, the question is how much Victor or how much Sean thought he was going to win or how, you know, how much, right? Because if you, if you have a 50%, if you think you have 50% chance of winning, then you're going to, you know, not offer a lot of money because you go, you're going to push him. But once he loses, loses, mm-hmm. then he's just got to make a deal.